Hello, welcome back to XCOM. I'm Jade Star. And I'm Jade Star's Valentine. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Ah, thank you, Guava. <laughs> I figured if you would take offense to any of those statements, it would have been the second one, but... But that you, you want people to have a happy Valentine's Day? Well, it's, that was yesterday. Oh. Depending on how, when you upload this. Which I hope you do today. Okay, so, scientists, easy. Japan, probably don't do that one. I really wanted to do Japan. More I really wanted to do Japan. Yeah. But the way the global panic levels uh, were set, unfortunately, it was a much better idea to go to Germany and manage the uh, panic. And here's a new rookie, James Dean. Another suspiciously high aim for a rookie. Yep, yep. Gotta love that uh, not created equally. He has a uh, suspiciously low will, I think, though, as well. Uh, also, for the keen eyed, I forgot to rename in Stumperund. Uh, I will fix that at the end of the video. And what is his new name? Her. Her new name, nickname? Uh, I believe Hersel Carl was the uh, oh, most yes. popular Oh, yes, excellent. Landing. Our target site is near the German border. Local government forces have reported a coordinated alien attack in a densely populated neighborhood. They're counting on us to mm, The construction site, I, uh, not a fan of this one. Really? It's, it's pretty tough, that's why. Hmm. I mean, it can be fun, it's just tough, is what I meant, really. Okay, fair enough. I like this map. It was added in and you within. This is Big Sky. Strike team has reached the AO. Requesting authorization to deploy. Solid copy, Big Sky. Strike Not as familiar with it, so I'm kind of scouting around a little bit. Yeah, is this the one that has a giant pit eventually? It's got kind of a trench uh, bisecting the map. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. I wouldn't call it a giant pit, but eh. I don't know, maybe yeah, Germany's cutting through their forests to put a road in or something? I'm on it, Commander. So, uh, big change to see you got five guys now? Oh, yes! Uh, officer Training School got built, and I sold enough Thin Men corpses to get uh, squad size one. How many? Uh, you should keep, what, four of them at minimum, I believe? Overwatch. For what? There's a certain number of corpses that you always want to keep for uh, certain foundry skills. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, six Thin Men. Uh, two for the Autopsy and uh, four for the Improved Med Kit. Yes, Improved Med Kit is what you want out of them. Yeah. That is a great thing to get. Uh, I don't have a Foundry yet, though, so... <laughs> yeah, still working on that. So I had totally missed where the Meld Sense was, because that feature hardly ever works. Yep, me too. I started looking around going, shit, I heard it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, boy. I get a lot farther into this map without seeing any meld or enemies than I expected. So eventually I got tired of creeping up a half move at a time. I'm like, eventually Tony White can cover half the map in a single dash, and it's just, I want to find something already. So you have two supports on this mission? On the move. Uh, no? Well, I thought you just yes? saw you move two in a row. Uh, I got a, oh, maybe I do. That's right, because I don't have a heavy. Yeah, good place for a sniper up on here. Yep. Uh, I'm not using Ragnar because I don't want him to promote and roll 0 to 2 aim uh, promotion level as opposed to 0 through 6 when we eventually mech him. So uh, Ragnar has been benched. So assault sniper rookie, two supports, looks like. Yes. Ah, there's a meld. The uh, obvious idea here is that we're trying to get the rookie promoted, and if he gets to heavy, that would be awesome, and then he can, you know, keep his limbs and be a heavy. Bien. It's really funny kind of looking at the math that uh, Ragnar, with his progression rate, won't be able to have as much aim as that rookie if that rookie uh, promotes to a heavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, I mean, thinking long term, I don't know how much mechs really need aim when they should just be punching everything, at least in my books all the time. Moving. Fair point. I mean, mechs do get a lot they're, of other they're alternatives. They're definitely the frontline unit, and they're not going to be firing from too far away. Right, and I'd, I'd still rather have a high aim mech than not have a high aim mech, obviously, yeah. but you're right, they have a lot of other abilities that mean they don't necessarily need high aim. They, they can be punching things, they can be doing um, 
What's that? Collateral damage. They could be doing grenades. They could be doing mines. So you're not moving too aggressively here. This is... I mean, you're keeping your guys safe. Yeah, I really expected to see hostiles by now. And finally, I get a meld sense, and I see that meld canister. And I'm, I'm thinking, this trench is like the halfway level, or the halfway mark of the map. Have I really gone that far and finally only begun to discover things? Go for the meld. <laughs> Go for it. You just want me to rush forward and get killed. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, this is not the construction site I thought it was. Yeah, this is the trench thing. Yeah, what construction site were you thinking of? Oh, there's one that has just a big pit and there's an excavator in it. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah but floaters! Yeah, but floaters. Oh, wait, is this the first floaters we've seen? The first floaters we've seen. Oh, is it? Oh, hooray, floaters. Yeah, they've got a uh, reimagined since uh, the other XCOM. They're, uh, yeah, much more... Well, much less ridiculous. Yeah. Not so much floaty anymore, though. No, not not so much definitely floaty Definitely rocket anymore. propelled. Oh, the joys of squad side snipers. Indeed. So that was a dead floater. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really wanted that one in high cover dead, so I even used a uh, headshot on it for the crit chance and didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> nope. And there's no good cover. Well, maybe yeah, maybe move forward a little more. Yeah, we can use the front of the bulldozer. Get him his kill and promotion, hopefully. Yeah, perfect. Kills one, robs the other of cover. Uh, German posters, please tell us what road closed is in Germany. I don't know how to say that. So that you can yell it at the uh, floaters? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's that sign back there that says road closed in English. Oh, I'd miss that. It was uh, pretty ridiculous in the first game how everyone had an American accent. Right. It was it was so nice once they actually gave you the option to have uh, actual international accents on your characters. Which I'm glad you're using. Not accents so much well, as using their languages. native language. Yeah. 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 Oh, I see the road closed sign behind the meld. Yes. So this felt like a real, kind of, odd use of run and gun. No, perfectly valid. Yeah. Just didn't want to leave that floater out there. If it doesn't have any cover, it's as good as dead. Yeah. Really, whatever you shoot it at with. But now i got to get Tony White over here to make sure we grab the meld can before it explodes. You might want to be picking it up if you're thinking about getting the second meld. If I had to hazard a guess, based on its profile, I'd say the aliens developed this unit with the intention of tracking and isolating single targets. It appears to have a sophisticated evasion system as well. Perhaps we should try to avoid... So, Shen with useful information, and then Valen being shut the fuck up! <laughs> okay, so that's the first time we're seeing Seekers. Yeah, new, new unit. New unit from Enemy Within. Uh, the corpse is very valuable. Don't want to be selling those. Really? Yeah, there's something oh. you can make with their corpses, and uh, eventually right. Seekers will stop showing up at all. Mm. Um, now, the instant you see Seekers, what you want to be doing, what I hope you're doing, is uh, immediately start bunching all of your characters together. Like that sniper way over there, by itself? Probably yeah. a bad idea. Eh, I've got a turn or two before they can get that far. Their attack. Negative Seekers, they cloak, and then they try to ambush one of your guys by a form of melee attack. They kind of cling and try to suffocate a person. And they absolutely will go for the character by themselves. Absolutely. It's uh, it, I, I'm surprised that it attacked the one that there's a whole group of three right there. Usually I find Seekers wait a couple turns to find the most isolated character and attack them. Really, I usually find that one Seeker will try to strangle somebody within the first turn or two of being discovered, and the other one will take 
several turns to try to find the most isolated. And the horses, when you forget that they're coming, and actually sp spread a guy out. Yeah. They're also a good way of making you lose a couple of turns in case you're trying to rush towards Meld and you don't want anyone getting strangled. It would be interesting if they, uh, later in the game, if they had a, there's some kind of Seeker upgrade, like a Heavy Seeker. Right. That would have been that cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And to get more corpses from them, but eventually they just stopped showing up, which is kind of disappointing. They had this whole strangula strangulation mechanic and then ways to counter it, and then it just disappears halfway through the game. Oh, as if. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to bitch about that one when I was playing this. I was sitting there thinking, well, it's a 40% chance. I don't particularly want to overwatch him, because that flutter's in heavy cover. He probably won't go anywhere. Fuck it, I'll take the shot anyway. And then I hit, and I'm like, yep, Guava's going to bitch about that one. Yeah. There have just been too many of those in this LP. Well, when you're out of other alternatives, taking the low odd shot, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Hopefully, uh, my thirst for blood will be satiated by some seeker strangling some dude. Comfort zone. Usually, it's pretty hard to lose a guy. To, oh, uh, I've never lost. A, I've never lost someone to a seeker, but it, they do make you go into panic mode for a few turns. Yeah. Also, when they uh, latch onto someone, they become rather difficult to hit. Sprawl goes running for the hill there because exactly what you said with the whole uh, seeker strangulation thing. I've got that sniper sitting up on that hill all by herself. So I was starting to get a little paranoid of, wait a minute, where's that other seeker? Oh crap, there it is. If you do five damage with this shot, I okay, good. <laughs> good, I'm happy. Negative damage. You just want to see some strangulation. Yes, it is. Well, I meant to have uh, Sprawl go up there to guard uh, Nithian, but other way around sort of happens. Kill confirmed. Need a resupply. And the turn after you get done being strangled, you can barely move and you suffer some pretty uh, extreme aim penalties as well. Yeah, I don't even know why they even let you move that unit. Well, it gives you a chance to reload or hunker down or something at least. Well, I guess hunkering down might be the best option. Yeah. It's not like a seeker should ever catch you out in the open and you'll need that extra move to get into cover. You're probably already in cover when it attacks you. Yeah, fair point. Somewhere up there guarding that mill can is the last floater. Should be two more floaters somewhere, yeah. Two more? No, one more. Two more? One more? Okay. Yeah, I remember Rookie shot the one in high cover. It was a group of two. Okay. Better get up there quickly and get that meld. Well, Tony's there. We can grab it next turn. Or Rookie. Still kind of wondering where the hell that floater went. And that stupid white van was blocking some of uh, Nitian's shots earlier, so move her around left of it. That floater used their uh, ability to just teleport to a different place on the map, maybe? Launch? No, I don't yeah. think so. Normally, it's I really love it when they use launch, because they they use it very poorly. They could use it to get in some really high cover somewhere and flank you, but they just, I don't know, sometimes they just teleport way out in the middle of nowhere. You can just shoot them unflanked. Hmm. Usually they try to launch and land behind my squad site sniper and in cover. I swear there's another floater out there. I've really forgotten what happened to him. Ten four. I like the spot for the sniper. Yes. Sure, it's out in the open, but yeah, they're not going to get shot at. Good view of yeah. everything. It's way behind my, uh, my team here, so if we can see an alien... It's not going to be able to see past the front line of the other four units and see Nin standing out in the open. 
I swear to God, did we kill that other frigging floater? Where the hell is it? I, I've forgotten. Okay, rookie killed one in cover. The other one had... I can't remember. When did you record this? <laughs> like yesterday. We just watched it. What the hell happened to that second floater? Position confirmed. On Overwatch. I must have dealt with it. <laughs> what is it doing? Yeah. There's something out there. Okay, you meant the two thin men? Uh, the sound waves, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what the fuck. Because, spoilers, that's the last enemy on the map. Well, obviously it is. I don't know how much time is left in the video, but whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Be a good time, perhaps, for a run and gun. He's behind heavy cover, and I can't get Sprawl far enough up. Uh, I was thinking about it, but just couldn't get the movement range, so my thought became to run Sprawl up into heavy cover uh, and hunker down if I had the movement for it, and then run and gun it next turn. Okay. But I can readjust uh, Nidian on top of the truck. Oh, oh. interesting feature there. <laughs> Good to go. Well, this thing is clearly dead next turn, but hopefully it gets one good spit in on someone or something like that. Uh, a spit? I wouldn't mind. Uh, a spit would only do, like, one or two damage. A good hit from the light plasma rifle it's carrying could do, you know, six or nine on a critical and kill someone. But we're not that lucky. Well, also... Since its rifle is the more dangerous of the options, I suppress it. Ooh, and then it doesn't ooh. give a fuck anyway. It doesn't give a fuck. See, that's why I don't like suppression. It just, sometimes it's just, what's the point? Well, it, at least it prevented it from shooting someone who would have died to a six hit damage. Yeah, that, well, yeah, that was good. Like Sprawl or the Rookie. Did force it to shoot that guy. Yeah. Shotgun to the face. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. You get so happy when it's run and gun time. I love run and gun. Should be run and gunning all the time. The, the, the shotgun blast and the reload after is so satisfying. <laughs> another day, another successful operation. Well, totally forgot about that other floater. I guess we killed it, and I didn't even notice. We totally spaced on it. Yeah. Well, the Seeker was more more worthy of our attention at the moment. Yes. Brand new enemy type. Fun guys. Definitely going to cut them up and study them. And, lo and behold, James Dean makes it to a heavy. Uh, first, Nitian has a lieutenant choice between battle scanner and disabling shot. Oh, these are both great. Really, I find them both kind of underwhelming. That's why I like uh, snipers. Have one of each of these. Hmm. Well, if you're trying to capture things like crazy, which I always do, a disabling shot's really helpful. Right. Uh, I took it just because, as a squad site, she's going to be in the back most of the time, so less opportunity for a um, battle scanner. Also, sometimes there's uh, some Remember, some really dangerous enemy you, just, you can't kill it this turn, but you don't want to deal with it right now, so you can just disabling shot it. Yeah, fair point. It's, it's definitely a useful skill, but so is Battle Scanner. Because if you throw it and reveal a group of enemies, they don't move yet, so you can get a bunch yeah. of free shots. Absolutely. Both good skills, both rather situational. Um, you know, 50-50 on it. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I like both those skills. They're both very good. Also, I fixed up Nidian's uh, nickname like I said I would. But still can't pronounce it. I uh, right. All in all, a good uh, a good day for XCOM. Uh, also, we've got the thermo generator up. I've got tons of shit building. I don't think I'm going to show uh, at the end of the video here. But uh, we've got our cybernetics lab building. I think we've got the gene lab building and the foundry, maybe. Ooh, that'll yeah, be fun. No, yeah, getting lots all those of stuff up and working. That, yeah, a lot of stuff that needs to get built. 
Well, thank you for joining me, Guava. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. All right. Uh, so I've been Jade Star. I'm Guava Moment. And we'll see you next time. And happy late Valentine's Day, I guess. Oh, the YouTube suggestion is for cat and guava fruit. <laughs> Gotta watch this. Look at that cat eat that guava.